Hello everyone, welcome to our first episode of Ipsol Facto. Today I would like to propose a compilation of uh, date night fragrances, seeing how there's uh, Valentine's Day is uh, quickly uh, coming upon us. Um, I would like to go through a list of fragrances that can be easily uh, found at your department stores, Macy's in Canada, Hudson's Bay, um, or some, uh, some pharmacies that do have beauty boutiques. Uh, in Canada we have Shoppers Drug Mart, maybe Sumbrexol, uh, London Drugs. Um, in the States I'm not super familiar, familiar with uh, which, uh, which ones would carry these, but you know, your Alta uh, and, and such uh, such stores. So the whole point was for a list of fragrances that are not discontinued, uh, not super hard to find. Um, should you not have one of these stores in uh, your immediate vicinity, you should be able to get these online. So um, they should be well stocked, especially with uh, Valentine's Day being around the corner. So that's kind of the, the point of this list. Um, it's not really a rank list, so if there is a um, rhyme or reason to it, I think I wanted to go from fragrances that are, that are, I guess, more easy to like to ones that are might be a little more divisive. Though, I think most people can agree that about 85-95% to 95 of people will like this. Whether you will like it on uh, wearing this the particular fragrance yourself that's a different matter but I think to those around you um, they would be very very pleasing scents so that's kind of the the point of this dynamic and I think we should start because we got we got a pretty long list ahead of us all right so first one up we have Dior Homme this is the 2020 version so this one when it came out, this was uh, it's it's a Francois de Machy uh, creation. Uh, he was the in-house perfumer uh, at Dior up until recently, uh, when uh, Francis Coquelin uh, took over. So there was talk that the uh, Dior Online would get some sort of a refresher. There was definitely going to be a harmonization of the perfume bottles to kind of be more in line, some sort of like rebranding. Um, but also that there would be some tweaks uh, to the formulas. So people were thinking tweaks, not what actually happened, which was a totally new fragrance. So the Dior Online was um, based on, so leave out the flankers of uh, like the Sport and the Cologne. Uh, the Dior Online, so Dior Homme, Dior Homme Intense, later on the Parfum. Um, very heavily based on iris it was one of the uh, maybe the first masculine uh, targeted iris fragrance or like heavily iris um, at first not very well received uh, but you're stuck with it it became uh, a darling of the fragrance aficionados the fragrance community just people loved it and due to that love, people were not prepared for the arrival of this guy. Um, so this is, there's no Iris. And um, that was, Iris was kind of like a big thing in the, the, the original uh, Dior Homme, which they ended up re-releasing after this guy came out and there was like this whole uproar. Was it already always planned to be re-released as uh, what, what it's called now, which is Dior Homme Original. Um, so they, uh, it, it was it was basically pandemonium when this when this came out. So reaction fragrance. So it, it was something that people, it, it was I guess nobody was preconditioned for what they were about to receive. I think was the main the main problem. So people were expecting like a, a twist on the old iris fragrance and they got a brand new fragrance that had no iris. They weren't prepared. They uh, also, it also just doesn't, didn't quite make sense to anyone. I don't know if it still does make sense to anyone why they would have released a very different fragrance under the same, under the same name. They could have just as easily made it a flanker or just start a new line. They didn't, uh, but anyways, so kind of how I came to it, I was thinking I was buying, I, I 
ordered it, so I was thinking I'm buying the old formulation, which, though I'm not, and it may not be apparent as you as you we go through the list, I'm not like a huge fan of Iris. I like it. I don't love it. Definitely not a, not to the extent that other people do. So even though, you know, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't sure I was gonna love uh, the Diorome. I had nowhere to test it, so I, it was a blind buy. Um, I figured I should have it as a reference. You know, I'm a fragrance aficionado. I don't know if I would say collector, but I don't collect for the sake of collecting. Uh, it's more of a fragrances I like. If I don't like it, chances are pretty good. I'll just let it go at some point. So anyways, uh, so I, but I still wanted to to have it to see what, what the hype was all about. So I ordered it and then this one was sent to me. So it was from a website, a gray market website, and they basically sent me the wrong cologne. The picture that they had on their website was of the previous formulation, but then I got this formulation. I didn't realize, of course, until I was so excited. I opened it up, I sprayed it, and then there was no iris. But what came out, it was still love at first spray for me. So it, it, it's got this like pink pepper, I think it is, in the opening. So there's like a little bit of spiciness slash like warmth. Um, it still comes off as fresh and clean. There's some muskiness in there. Um, woodiness as well. Um, but it's, it's like a very masculine. That was kind of one of my concerns with the previous formulation. I was thinking a lot of people, you know, how they say like it's it kind of, it's got that makeup, iris smell. So I was kind of uh, on the fence about it, but I, I, I still pulled the trigger. So thinking I, that's what I was buying. And I said, you know what, like, even if I don't like it, I'll uh, take my chances. I'll have it as a reference. And I also know that your tastes do change over time. So it may very well be that I would like it later on. It's being discontinued or at least tweaked to we, as, as what we knew that it was getting tweaked. So I said, I'll just get it. But in the back of my mind, it was always a matter of like, is it gonna be too feminine for me? So anyways, I got this and I loved it. It's supremely likable, supremely uh, versatile. Like this, you can wear it day or night. Uh, you can wear it with t-shirt and shorts, jeans, up to and including a uh, suit jacket. Um, and why not just like full full suit? Um, it's it's uh, also versatile uh, regarding where you can wear it. So office, you can easily wear this at the office um, and date night, uh, you know, function. So again, where, when, any season, any sort of weather, temperature, humidity level. I think I belabored that point enough. Um, it also has, for me, quite good performance for what it is. It's not a beast. I don't think it was meant to be a beast. Um, I think it's meant to be like a catch-all fragrance, all-in-one. If you, and I, I could easily recommend this, if you need only one fragrance, I would say this is the one. Um, now, obviously, I would not recommend you only get one fragrance, but if you're that kind of a guy or the person you're, you're buying for is that sort of a gentleman, and I would even, I don't lightly say this, you can blind buy this. I don't know who wouldn't like this. Though, so, there will be, I'm sure. I think it's as safe as there is uh, to blind buy anything. This, this would be the fragrance. Um, and yeah, like I, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want a, a scent like this. Uh, you get about an hour of uh, projection, quite strong projection past arm's length, I would say like within the one half, two meter uh, radius. And then after about like for the, for the last six ish, five, six hours, it's, it's, it's a good bubble about within arm's length. Uh, but that's all you, you can ask for, um, especially in the office. It's not, it's not going to overpower anyone. It's not going to overwhelm anyone in a date night scenario. 
again, you don't want anything that's just gonna push and scream and just, you know, you don't know who you're, uh, you don't always know who you're sitting across from. Not everybody loves a strong fragrance. So, this is an easy, easy one to recommend. Also, I think we should move on. All right, next one. So, now we have L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent. And this one is Le Parfum. So, L'Homme came out a while ago. I don't remember exactly. I would say in the is it 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, that one's a ginger based, super, super likable, super popular, still around fragrance. Um, performance is not great, just like for most. Uh, most YSLs, these are not performers, generally speaking. Early formulations of La Nuit de Long, of this, that, and the other. Nowadays, the Y line is kind of their decent performers, but I think even those have gotten reformulated to some extent. So, this guy here is a blue take, as the bottle and juice would suggest. Um, it's a blue take on the uh, the, uh, the LOM DNA. Um, this one is an EDP, so Eau de Parfum. That said, it doesn't really perform as such. Um, it's also not one of the cheaper ones out there, but it is a great scent. Um, this one is uh, a 2020 release as well, uh, woody aromatic. Um, it's not as generic as many of the blue scents out there are. Like a lot of them resemble each other quite a bit. This one borrows from the La Nuit de Long line. So it borrows the cardamom. So that's what kind of gives it the sweetness, like sweet, spicy. Um, so cardamom and amber wood it is. That's, those are kind of the, the two components. Um, it's, it's quite modern, quite elegant. Um, I would say versatile. I think you could pull this off in a climate-controlled environment. You could pull this thing off in an office, I think. I mean, it's kind of borderline, if I was to be honest. Just the sweetness is... It's not, I guess, what I would consider like the go-to for uh, an office fragrance, but that said, a lot of people do stray into the sweeter scents for office so and this one's not nothing overwhelming it's not super sweet or anything so it's not not something that I would advise against let's say um, also uh, versatile from the standpoint of their night so you could wear it though the I, I don't know that I would say this is a t-shirt shorts sporty kind of fragrance so i would say at least casual like jeans and stuff like that business casual a little more dressed up is kind of what i would uh, what i would go so we mentioned performance performance let's say like a 45 minute good projection arm's length kind of thing and then it it goes down quite a bit all in all i think we're looking at about a five hour for another parfum it, it's 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 mild. Let's not call it weak. It's it's not what you would hope for. Uh, though if you apply it on clothes, it'll last longer. And but for a date night scent, you don't really need more than that. Like date. Uh, next up, we have this one's a bit of a rarer one. So this is called Trusardi Riflesso. So, riflesso means, means like reflection or reflex in Italian. Trusardi being an Italian uh, house, as far as I know, it's still like family owned. It's not, it's not been gobbled up by one of the, the large multinationals like LVMH, uh, you know, Estee Lauder, or etc. So, this one is a 2017 release. Uh, Veronique Nyberg is the perfumer. This one is a spicy, amber woody uh, uh, fragrance. 
also this one is compared by many to uh, considered to be very similar in the vein of La Nuit de Longue. Now La Nuit de Longue, when it came out, it was a great performer. So we're talking like eight to ten hour performance. And the more recent batches, we're talking about half that if you can get that much. So a lot of people moved away from La Nuit de Longue by Yves Saint Laurent. Um, because prices have gone up, yet performance has halved. So, you know, people don't usually like that kind of stuff. So, people are always looking for an alternative. And this one is a great alternative. Um, only downside will be you might not find it everywhere. So, it's not going to be as readily available as La Nuit de Longue. So, in Canada, as far as I know, only Hudson's Bay carries it but you know I'm sure there's gonna be some retailers in the States I'm sure in Europe it'll be more readily available since it's an Italian house so this one is uh, a fresh spicy aromatic take it's got some lavender violet leaf um, it does have the sweetness that a very similar sweetness it might not be necessarily cardamom but uh, it, it does have a very similar vibe to La Nuit de Lombe. This one is going to be, I would say, a little more mature. So, because of the lavender, the sweetness is not quite at the same level, so it's it's a little more toned down. The lavender makes it a little more reminiscent of maybe some 90s scents. Lavender also being something that, uh, an ingredient that I guess was more ever present in more classic male perfumery so it just gives it a feel of slightly more mature than La Nuit de Lombe. So maybe 30 some odd years plus, 35 plus, it, it'll depend but it's very elegant, very classy. Um, it also has actually in the dry down has a bit of a, like a leathery, like suede-ish tone. So a very smooth, very easy to like leather. That's also something that kind of sets it apart from, uh, from La Nuit de Lombe. Not maybe as versatile as the rest of the, of the list so far. I don't know that you could pull this off with anything less than, or that I would, let's just say this that I would pull this off with anything less than business casual. I think khakis, polo slash button up shirt is kind of where this, this guy starts coming in to the equation. Um, performance, also quite a bit better. I would say quite a bit better than La Nuit de Lombe. Uh, you can get seven hours, uh, first hour and hour and a bit, strong projection good sillage then it comes in a little closer but we're not talking five hours overall we're talking like seven to eight hours so and it it also is a little bit cheaper than uh, La Nuit de Lombe so I mean, why not easy easy to like again I really don't see this is not a divisive scent in any way I I would be if I had to put a number on it I'd say a good 90 to 95 percent of people will like this Okay, so why don't we just keep keep on going? Next up, heavy hitter. This one is uh, Dolce & Gabbana, the one. This one's the EDT. Known to many, if not all, known to many. Uh, loved by pretty much everybody. Though, not so much to me. When I uh, when I first smelled this, this was uh, so this came out. Oh wait, two thousand eight. Olivia Polge uh, was a perfumer. So this has been around for like over like almost like fourteen years. Uh, no, over that fifteen ish is going to be this year. Um, that says everything you need to know so a perfume that hangs around for that long is a 
a perfume that is still doing very well, and I know it is for Dolce & Gabbana. Um, it's well loved, and uh, but getting back to to my my experience. So at the time, so around 2008, 10, let's say, um, I wasn't as into fragrances as I am now. I hadn't smelled all the different uh, fragrances I, I smelled up to this point. So let's say I was more of a novice, used to kind of like citrusy, uh, barbershop-ish, fougere kind of, like, you know, more classical uh, men's colognes. Um, so I, I didn't really know how to interpret this one. I just found it quite sweet for me at that time. This is this is a more an ambery fragrance. Um, it's called it's classified as a woody spicy, but it's it's very ambery uh, to me. Um, more in the oriental. Um, now it's called amber, uh, actually, but it's it's an oriental style fragrance. And when I smelled it first, I was I was not I. I didn't. I didn't dislike it. I just didn't. I wasn't sure that I liked it enough for you know to pay the money they were asking for at that time. It wasn't the the style of fragrance that I was very familiar with, so I wasn't. I wasn't 100% on it. Fast forward a few years. Um, I got this maybe about three years ago, and and this will happen to every one of you. The more you smell, it's you know like you're training your nose. The more you're exposed to different scents and so on, you learn to appreciate it. And that's what happened with me. Like I, I smelled this about three, three, four years ago, and I was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know how I didn't like it to begin with. Um, this is just a darling of the fragrance community everybody and their cousin and their mother and their father has smelled it owns it um, the EDP seems to have a little more traction but so that one is also has a little bit more performance this has been reformulated so people kind of like shifted to the EDP because of slightly very slightly better performance and uh, but you lose the tobacco and i i don't know if it's psychological or not but i, I do sense the difference I, I do kind of miss that you know tobacco sort of like a little hay um note i find the the edp a little more ambery a little a little sweeter so for me the edt is is a better is a better scent even though the performance isn't, isn't awesome. Um, but date night, so if we're, if we're gonna deal with performance, this will be about a five hour fragrance, all in all. I don't even know, like about 45 minutes after spraying, you'll get good projection and sillage. Afterwards, I would say, but again, look at the, the color. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty amber dark uh, juice be mindful spray it on clothes if you can if you're wearing something a little darker it'll give you a little more it'll extend the life of the fragrance um, so I would say do that it's 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 become kind of like the quintessential date night as soon as you say date night people's minds go to this one and La Nuit de Long by Yves so these are kind of like the go-to especially designer and uh, mass marketed fragrances um, again especially on especially after you're into the dry down i really don't know too many people that will will be put off by this which is why it's so popular still around um, it seems like it's an evergreen composition it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's it's going away anytime soon if you look at people's lists you'll generally still find it uh, and and again for 15 year old fragrance that says something right so this one's a good one 
and uh, again, you can find it pretty much everywhere. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're into, uh, into another heavy hitter. This one is called Spice Bomb by Victor and Wolf. This one's the extreme. So Spice Bomb, the regular one, came out, um, I want to say, I don't, I want, I don't want to lie to you. So I, I'd say in and around 2010. Uh, this one's a 2015 release. Um, Amber Spicy also still has some tobacco. So I do like tobacco and this one is, uh, like a sweet tobacco fragrance, sweet spicy, you know, spice bomb, you would expect some spiciness. And that comes from the black pepper, you'll have tobacco, vanilla. Vanilla is kind of like the base, a lot of tobacco fragrances will be on the sweeter side and it's usually paired with uh, vanilla, vanilla base. Very smooth uh, blend, um, the tobacco is fairly prominent, so you know, if you hate it, which I don't know many people that do, um, or if you know that the person you're uh, you're seeing for your date night um, is not a fan, um, maybe stay away from this one. Maybe stay away from the um, uh, the one EDT. But if we are to believe all the all the top tens and all the you know blind smells and so on, ladies and men love this scent. It's even considered by many like one of the best uh, perfumes all time for men. Um, performance used to be amazing. Like you may find some reviews or you know read some reviews that where people say that it, it used to be like a 12 to 15 hour and you just can't get it off. That's not been my experience. Um, I'm sure it's been reformulated. It's been around for, for a minute. Usually what you notice is about two, three years in, after, after being released, the fragrances do get some sort of reformulation, whether it's because of Ifra, because of this, because of that and the other. There's, the performance isn't, isn't amazing for me, um, but it's decent. So we're talking still like seven-ish hours. The first hour and a half is is good projections, good sillage, uh, and then it comes a little closer. Again, you spray on close, you'll get you'll get a little more longevity. But it's a very cozy scent. It's it's an enveloping, warm, um, perfect for cold days uh, and nights. Um, spice bomb, you kind of expect a little bit of warmth from the spices, and. Um, the, the sweetness from the vanilla is kind of what what make it more so uh, uh, let's say colder weather fragrance um, though honestly like even on a I, I, I could wear it during the day easily it, it, it's not only a night night fragrance for me um, you could I don't know if I would go sporty with this definitely casual semi uh, semi formal wear um, also I don't know that I would do like a tux with this this fragrance there, there are some better options out there um, but it's it's I would say also like assuming that you don't hate tobacco or vanilla you should love this um, in Canada the only place I know still carries it is Sephora so maybe Hudson's Bay. So it's been kind of harder and it, it kind of goes out of stock for a while, then it comes back. There were there was stock of discontinuation of this one, but it's still around. So I don't know. I don't know what the situation is in the States um, or in Europe. Um, so take it for what it's worth. If you can find it, it's an awesome fragrance. Okay, moving on. Uh, this one's gonna be a twofer. So I kind of couldn't really decide so, and seeing that it's part of the same line, I'll go like this. So, Armani Code Parfum and Armani Code Eau de Parfum. Similar DNA, um, Eau de Parfum, as you would probably expect, it's a little fresher. Um, no iris that I can pick up anyways. A little more kind of the 
Lavender Tonka, like the kind of the closer to the regular, the EDT, um, original Armani code. Um, whereas the Parfum, this guy has iris. It's got quite a bit of iris, which seems to be a trend. It seems like a lot of men's perfumery, especially the, I guess, more evening geared, colder weather geared uh, releases seem to contain iris quite heavily and that's been the case with this one and i think it's also because a lot of people seem to like men white people and men seem to have enough of an appreciation for iris after you know after you had the dior home line the valentino Womo line givenchy gentleman line so it's, it's been around enough where people's noses are used to it they don't no longer connected to like women's makeup and, and it's also the interpretation of the iris or oris root it's it's going to be a little different not all of them will smell exactly the same uh, so but you'll see it a lot even in this list um iris so this one is woody aromatic that both of them are uh antoine maison dieu is the perfumer this one's a 2022 release and i think this is a 2021 so the eau de parfum. Um, I would say, like they do share, if I had to put a number on it, I would say about a 70%. The DNA is very similar. This one's heavy. Uh, the 30% difference would be the, the iris. Um, if you prefer, so it, it, it'll be a little sweeter, a little more powdery versus this one. So if you were to prefer, a fresher take on the on the heavier code DNA. It's not going to be as fresh as the EDT, obviously. But if you prefer a, a fresher take, I would say go with this one. It's got very good performance, eight hour ish. Um, but if you do like a little powdery, uh, slightly sweeter, still fresh, it's like a, a cooling kind of iris interpretation. Um, you still get the sweetness, like the tonka again. Like it's, it's. Think of it as the base is like you have like a, a base code uh, juice. Then you just add a couple of ingredients to get to this guy, and a few other ingredients to get to this guy. So the DNA is very similar. If you want a little more sweetness, powdery iris, go this way. This one, I think maybe more people would would like um, overall. So if you're not a mega fan of Iris, easy, easy choice. But I, I think just in general, mass, if, you, if you're talking about the public at large, I would say probably the EDP will be a slightly better choice. Uh, both of them have very good uh, performance. So good projection for the first hour and a half, two hours. Um, on clothes, they last forever. On skin, seven to eight hours. I've heard some people complain about the performance on the Code Parfum. I can't, I can't uh, agree with that. I mean, if you expect 10 to 12 hours, like beast mode, you'll be disappointed, but I didn't expect that. So it's always about what your expectations are. And I mean, I don't know, just cause it's an iris. And I guess when you compare it to your own intense uh, or uh, Valentino Womo, Valentino Womo Intense, uh, maybe it, it won't perform quite as strong as those, but it's good enough. These are very versatile, well, the EDP is quite versatile, almost that you could even wear it at the office. Um, semi-formal, I would say casual to semi-formal and formal, um, year-round for the Eau de Parfum, actually for both of them, you could go year-round um day or night the parfum more so night um probably both of them are not uh hot weather uh, they're not hot weather fragrances um summer nights yes but just not during the day uh, high temperature all right i think we should probably get going well we were just speaking of uh, the givenchy gentleman line and how it's you know of the iris heavy uh, 
more cold weather slash evening gear fragrances. And uh, this one here is the newer newest release of the line. This one is the Gentleman uh, Reserve Privé. So this one is a flanker of the Gentleman, but kind of a reinterpretation of the Gentleman EDP, which the Gentleman EDP was kind of like the best seller of, I would say probably Givenchy is a, I would like Givenchy's uh, main uh, line. Okay, a Gentleman is their main line. Uh, commercial designer they also have their higher end line and then they have some some uh, some other ones there but this one is actually a very good reinterpretation tweak twist of the gentleman edp it seems like it's it was very well received as well it's a 2022 release um natalie lorson and uh, olivier Crest, uh, which were also the perfumers for edp so obviously they like Givenchy likes how they work and what they they put out. So they got him to uh, to come up with this guy. Um, it's an amber vanilla, iris heavy. So again, you don't like iris, I would keep going. This is not gonna be for you. Um, the the whole line is is very iris heavy. It is the twist here is. Uh, a boozy, they say whiskey, I don't know about whiskey, maybe cognac uh, would be a better descriptor. Um, it's a boozy and I actually do pick up uh, chestnut. So a little, there's a little bit of nuttiness. So think of it, this would be the EDP. So, which is a very creamy, smooth, round, orris fragrance. And I do detect, at least myself, the dry down, there is like a leathery facet to it. A smooth, like supple leather, nothing, nothing animalic or anything like that. But there's there's a leathery base. Um, and speaking of the dry down, this is almost identical. Like almost identical to the point where if you have EDP, I don't think you really need this. I mean, if, you, if you're a collector and you must have it, you get it. Um, Basically, the only difference would be in the mid slash, yeah, I guess the top, top notes, like you can pick up the booziness right away. Um, you can get the, I, I, at least I can get, I know some people can't quite get the nuttiness. I do get a, a bit of a, a nuttiness. The dry down though is almost one-to-one -one with the EDP, so up to you. Uh, if you think it's worth getting this one, if you have the EDP, I, I personally wouldn't. I didn't have the EDP, I just had like some samples. I was thinking, I was like at the point of, of, you know, committing to the EDP and then I heard this one was coming out, so I waited. I'm glad I waited because I like this one better than the EDP. So if you don't have the EDP, I would get this one. But if you do, I don't think, I, I think you, I don't know, I think you can you can get some something else that is a, a little more different, a little more different. And it has more of a difference in the in the scent, my personal opinion. But you know, I think we should keep. All right. So next, what we have here is also a very popular fragrance, um, at least in the fragrance community. So this one is Jazz Club. Um, the line is called Replica, and it is a uh, Maison Martin Margiela. So French house. Um, this one is a little trickier to get um, in Canada this one you can only grab it from well, actually it's not that tricky in Canada um, Sephora as well as Hudson's Bay will carry this one so those are kind of like the only two uh, larger retailers that carry it um, this one is a boozy tobacco fragrance two different uh, um, you know facets uh, accords that I really enjoy um, it it it's a toned down booziness. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty mellow, smooth booziness. It's not very in your face. At the same time, the tobacco is not super, uh, super obvious. So it, it's also a very creamy, so think of it like sort of like a, a creamy vanilla scent 
with some booziness and some tobacco aspects. Sweet tobacco. It's a sweet, overall, uh, a sweet, warm, uh, cozy kind of fragrance. Um, it's a very easy to like, easy to live with scent. So it's not, it's not going to be anything divisive. It's not, it's not breaking any uh, boundaries. Uh, so if, if uh, booziness or tobacco normally puts you off, this might be the sort of like the gateway to you maybe delving into that uh, into that kind of a scent where it's it's held back and it, it, it's it's uh, restrained enough that it won't offend you but maybe it, it'll it'll kind of uh, you know give your nose a chance to get acquainted and start to appreciate these kind of uh, accords um, this one out of all the all the ones all the the fragrances I selected I think is probably the most unisex together with another one that, that will come a little later so yeah I, I think it does lean a little masculine nevertheless but uh, females can easily wear this uh, and many do um, I would say a little more mature it's, a, it's an elegant fragrance this is not this is not for your tracksuit this is not uh, a gym fragrance uh, it'll, uh, it'll it'll basically be better suited for evening probably colder rather than uh, than warm evenings um, though on a crisp uh, summer's night you could you could easily rock it it's 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 not a very loud fragrance either so you know summer in the evening even if you go with something a little thicker like vanilla you know that kind of stuff ambers you want ones that are more restrained that don't uh, don't push out very very strongly just because then you're, you you know you get a, a gust of warm wind and it'll just overwhelm the crowd but um, this one's a you know a compliment puller um, all of these are in fact but this one always figures on people's lists of like best date night fragrances and so on um, because I agree um, and it's it's not it's not a super super common outside of the fragrance community it's not a super common uh, fragrance out there so I thought I, I would figure it uh, in my list um, it, it's gonna be a little more mature probably 30 plus I would say uh, if, I had to, if I had to put a number on it um, performance is good not great um, about an hour's worth of stronger projection but this one gets closer to a skin scent for me um, after about that hour so it's not it's not a very strong performer I would say all in all you get about I get about six ish six maybe seven hours if you spray it on clothes a little better but that's kind of where it's at it's it's again uh, this one came out in 2013 so it's it's coming up on its 10th year anniversary um, Eleanor Massinet is uh, the, the perfumer um, obviously it's 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 done well enough for Maison Marciola that it, it's still around it's a it's a good scent um, it's not I can say it's like a favorite of mine but not everybody has to like all the the you know have the exact taste as mine I think this one again 90 plus percent of people will like um, if not love so thought I'd, uh, I'd throw it in here and uh, I think we should keep going so this one uh, here is uh, a rarer harder to find fragrance uh, can be found in Canada at Hudson's Bay and I think that's about it um, nowhere else really um, there were uh, rumors of its discontinuation still around like it was it had gone away for a while now it's back in stock in the States it seems like it's still around um, the fragrance is Prada Luna Rosa black this one's a funny one so I love the scent I just I'm not sure if I go nose blind to it because I think I do 
to to be exact. I think I know I go nose blind to it um, because I did find, especially on clothes, I come back to the like whatever piece of garment I was wearing the next day and it's still there, which means it's got good performance. And even even if on clothes, but still like on textile, you you don't get too many fragrances that aren't you know like beasts that last overnight. So I after about like two hours, I kind of go I don't really sense it as much. But for those couple hours, it smells amazing. It's got it's got some sort of like a fizzy they say like a cola vibe to it. It's got a fizzy effervescence to it. It's a, it's a tonka bean heavy uh, scent. Um, you can, the coumarin, which is the, the active ingredient in, uh, in the tonka bean, is, uh, is, is front and center, okay? Um, it's an ambery, the dry down, it's, it's uh, so it's got bergamot angelica at the top. So it's got like sort of uh, citrusy floral, but for me it goes into the tonka. So there's this effervescence, whatever makes it make gives gives that uh, accord. Um, that effervescence for me stays for the couple hours, two three hours that I that I can perceive it well. It stays on for throughout uh, throughout those two three hours, but um, it's 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 basically a tonka bean fragrance. It is also a very well loved, again, in the fragrance community, uh, fragrance. Um, I wish it stayed around, and hopefully the uh, discontinuation rumors are that only rumors, because it's it's a great scent. I am hoping that with time, I, I also have not worn it a great amount of times because I go nose blind to it. I like to perceive my fragrance. I'm hoping. What I'm hoping is that with time. Maybe my nose, maybe my brain changes a little bit and I, I'll get to perceive it for longer. That may or may not happen. Nevertheless, even if I like have to reapply, it's a, it's a really great scent. And uh, it seems that most people get decent, if not really good performance out of it. So six to seven hours is what seems to be kind of the average. It may very well be that I get the same, I just can't smell it, unfortunately. So. Um, it's not a super versatile uh, scent. It's I would say this is more strictly evening, strictly date night. Um, yeah, like a night night in kind of thing, cozy, close encounters. I can't really see. Like it, it's not a it's not a huge projector. It lingers, but it, it it's never it's never pushing out. So. I can't see anybody wanting to wear this at a club or larger venues outdoors because it just won't really perform all that great. So um, that said, I, I, I do recommend it may very well be that it, it performs a lot better for you. So give it a shot. Okay, next one up. Allo. Oh, so this one is the O Extreme. So O Extreme. Um, is the flanker of a flanker. So Allure started out as uh, this like sandalwood, um, creamy sort of citrusy, creamy fragrance, woody uh, fragrance. Um, it's still around, kind of hard to find. Um, I guess it's not as popular as its flanker. So Allure, so this is the darker gray, so the Oxfam. Um, so this is the EDP or de parfum. The EDT is the silver. So this is more like the charcoal uh, bottle. For date night evenings, this is a little bit sweeter. Uh, so it's it's this one's a 2012 release. Uh, Jacques Paul is the perfumer. Uh, woody aromatic. It's um, minty-ish, um, creamy, sandalwood. So the, the mintiness, I think there's mint. I mean, like they say there's mint, I don't know. There's there's probably not mint, but there's a minty aspect to it. Um, I think there's sage and cypress as well. So there is 
this kind of like minty fresh uh, fresh herbal um, accord to it combined with a creamy not quite orris but that sort of creaminess um, a creamy smooth like sandalwood it's also pretty musky so there's like a, a cleanliness to it too um, and also just like woodiness uh, the woodiness of the, the sandalwood also tonka bean so we're talking about the um, Luna Rosa Black super heavy in tonka bean this one's not quite as heavy but heavy enough um, it's it's uh, a very good fragrance um, it's also been reformulated so it used to perform apparently amazingly again like 12 hours you couldn't take it off your skin and that's not been the case with me and it's like very sadly in for me and I, this one i don't go nose blind to um, so i have the edp as well as this one the edp i would say the edt even performs better than the ed uh, and then, then the edp i don't know I, I didn't check the batches and see like which one was made when and maybe that's an older batch whatever the I, I did get that one before i got this one so maybe um so this one it's only like a five hour four to five hour fragrance for me it, it then becomes such a skin scent that it's i mean like it's not really there uh if only you have to like put your nose on the skin to, to really scent, uh, feel it um apply on clothes uh it's it's a very very pleasant fragrance very inoffensive i've gotten compliments uh for this uh, many a times again um you also start to get into the kind of performance you get and the kind of money that is asked for these scents you start getting into a value based discussion like how much what, what what's the value that you're getting for the amount that you're, you're spending so that's i'll leave that up to you and you can uh, you can make up your own minds about that okay so moving on we got another iris fragrance believe it or not you would think that i'm a i'm a massive iris fan i'm not i like iris as i said but i do love these fragrances so um, this one is Jean-Paul Gaultier's uh, Le Mal Le Parfum. So this one's a 2020 release. I did get it as soon as it came out. So original formulation, it's a uh, Quentin Biche and uh, Nathalie Gracia Seto, I think. Um, collaboration, those are the perfumers. And this one, how we were discussing performance for some other fragrances thus far, this one is got no issues this one is a 10 hour easy for me 10 hour uh, fragrance um it's got cardamom so iris i would say is kind of throughout the mid and dry down um cardamom at the top so it gives a little bit of sweetness slash spiciness uh slash mintiness as cardamom does um lavender and iris kind of like lifts the uh, the picks picks the fragrance up a little bit um it's got warmth it's got some spiciness as well um also it does have like a bit of a leatheriness to me i, I do pick up on the in the base deep in the base a little bit of a little bit of something and oftentimes iris base scents do have like a leathery facet to it uh, to them um this one is a very elegant uh classy um likable scent it's uh almost i, I don't like to to use these sorts of uh qualifiers but you do want to go back to it and smell it again so i don't know if, if you want to call that addictive i guess um it's fairly loud uh, strong projection, uh, very good sillage, um, maybe a little more mature than your average uh, scent that we discussed. So I'd say like 30 plus, like 35 plus, could appreciate this a little better. Um, I would say this one is going to be uh, very similar to uh, Prada Long Intense, which is not on the list, but if you have that, I don't know that you really will need this. It's it's similar enough where they could be redundant. But anyway, this one is uh, 
is a great fragrance. Strongly recommend. Very strong still. I don't know that it's been reformulated yet, but hopefully not. All right. So we got the last of the 14 that I promised you. This one is a La Nuit de Londres, a Bleu Electrique. So this guy is a 2021 release. Very, very well received. A lot of people uh, thought that it was sort of a, a slight twist to the old La Nuit de Londres, um, but with a lot better performance, which the new formulation of La Nuit de Londres is greatly lacking. Now, as soon as it came out, by the end of the year 2021, there were rumors of its discontinuation. So much so that in the States, it's actually, you can't really find it anymore. However, for some reason in Canada, it's still around. Uh, both uh, Shoppers Drug Mart and the Bay, uh, Hudson's Bay, uh, have it. I'm not sure about Sephora, but anyways. Uh, the two previously mentioned for sure do have it. Um, so this one is a spicy aromatic. Um, the perfumer is Dominique Propion. Um, it is a, again, very strong cardamom uh, note. Uh, ginger, um, also lavender, uh, geranium, vetiver, and uh, cedar. That's what it was. Uh, so yeah, uh, it is a very, it's got, it's got, due to the cardamom and um, yeah, I think maybe mostly the cardamom, there's the, there's that sweetness that is uh, very much uh, a signature of uh, La Nuit de Um In this one, this one I do find it a little fresher. So it's lifted a little bit more than La Nuit de Lombe by Lavender and Geranium. So it, it kind of makes it almost a, like, yeah, the aromatic um aspect to it um it's I, I find it a little bit fresher than la nuit de l'homme um and the the, the florals though uh, the florals are quite toned down but it, it, they just use it to lift the composition a little bit that's all um this one the performance is quite good so if you like la nuit de l'homme but you don't like the performance this one is a good alternative it won't get you there 100 percent, but i would say I like get a good 85-90%. Uh, the differences are fairly minor. Um, not again, so as far as um, how versatile it is, uh, I would say more, I would say, I would, I would call this more of an evening, uh, late afternoon evening fragrance. Um, not so much an office. I would say this one's definitely after work, kind of a scent. Uh, date night, whatever you do in the evening, hobbies that are not sports, should uh, you should you should be fine with this one. Casual and dressier than that attire. Um, it's 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 an evening blue fragrance. So casual, semi-formal, almost. Uh, I wouldn't say formal. Um, it's it's a little on the playful side for like a, a proper formal scent. So if you can find it wherever you are, um, definitely worth a pickup. I don't know. I hope they don't discontinue it in Canada as well. Um, I think in Europe it's still around. For some reason, just the states, they're not. Maybe maybe they weren't good, and they it got taken away from them. Anyways, so this is the last one, and then I have. Just two, uh, two mentions that I want to put on your radar, but it's not, it's not a for sure, uh, a for sure recommendation for everyone. And that's coming up. And here we are. We got two mentions for, so these are sort of like wild cards, if you will. Um, they are Sauvage Elixir by uh, Christian Dio. And this one is Tom Ford's Black Orchid Parfum. Um, so let's, why don't we start with, um, with Sauvage Elixir. So this one was, I think it was a 2021 release. Um, Francois Demachy was the, uh, the perfumer, the house perfumer. Um, and this one, again, very well received. This one happens to be a performance beast. So this one, you want to be careful with the uh, atomizations. So 
in the scenario of a date night, I think you're probably good with two, max. If you apply on clothes, it'll be there for ever. Um, it is not very similar to Sauvage, like the regular Sauvage in any of its iterations. It's not very similar to EDT, EDT, or Parfum. Um, I would say it's it borrows some aspects. Um, it's definitely more aromatic. It's it's sort of like a, a more old school interpretation of the DNA. Um, it's more lavender heavy, uh, quite a bit spicier. Um, I do find that it is it is basically enjoyed by a more mature audience, by like a lot more mature audience than your your Sauvage EDP. EDP. Uh, I would say this. Like a sure bet would be 40 plus. Um, yeah, maybe maybe 35, but I would say more 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 likely 40 plus. It is somewhat of a divisive scent, though. So again, like this one, we're we're taking some chances with these two. Um, it, it's they're not they're not the you know 90 plus percent crowd pleasers. This one is you're taking some chances. And then you know, you know how it is. You play the odds. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. Um, definitely a great scent. Definitely worth uh, worth looking into. Uh, and again, same this one. Basically, wherever you'll find Sauvage and EDP, EDP Parfum, you should also find this one. So uh, Hudson's Bay, Shoppers, Drug Mart, uh, you know, Macy's, etc. This one here. Uh, Tom Ford's Black Orchid Parfum. I do find this one, uh, and I know I know there are lots of people that, uh, lots of men that are totally fine with uh, Black Orchid uh, EDP or EDT. I do think this one brings it a little more into the, uh, I guess, uh, into the the male. Rel. So it, it, this one's definitely more male leaning than EDT or EDP, in my opinion. Um, it, it's just a darker interpretation, still has that uh, black orchid DNA. Um, it still has that strong patchouli, like chocolatey patchouli um, accord. Throughout this one, I just do find it, it. It just has a little more depth. It's it's just as strong. It's maybe not as loud. So think of the treble. This one having a little more bass. If we're using the analogy of a, of a song, this one has a little more bass, and the treble more mid. Not as much treble. Like. The EDP, EDP, where just, they're a little more screechy, a little louder, a little more in your face. This one's toned down a little bit, a little more round. Um, this said, it's not a very easy to pull off fragrance, not for all men. So this one is definitely not like uh, Dior 2020. This is not a blind buy worthy recommendation this one it's it's divisive like you'll either either like it or you will dislike it um you i don't know that there will be too many people on the fence um though i was kind of on the fence i was i didn't know which way to go eventually after smelling it a few times every time i would walk into shoppers i would spray it a little bit you know live with it um and I started to appreciate it to the point where I, I ended up pulling the trigger and buying, uh, buying a bottle. Um, versatility for both of these, for uh, Sauvage Elixir and Black Orchid, I would say definitely Sauvage Elixir is more versatile. Both will be definitely more on the dressy side. So dressier occasions, evening, definitely cooler weather. I don't, especially Sauvage Elixir, I, I do find it quite cloying in certain scenarios, or if you overspray. 
I find it quite overwhelming for me, even more so than this one. So do use them mindfully, test them, go spray by spray. Because if you, if you go over it, I do it, like the, the Sauvage Elix here can actually bother me quite a bit if, if over sprayed. So that said, I just wanted to kind of like bring these two up, put them on your radar as, you know, something off the beaten path in a way, um, but worth nevertheless uh, exploring. I do hope that you guys uh, have a chance to go through. I know, I know it's, it's a long list. I know it's, uh, it took a little longer than I was hoping, but um, do give me some feedback. Uh, do you agree, disagree with any of the, of the picks? If you have any other picks that um, you think were would have been better suited, uh, please do mention them. And uh, you know what? I hope I'll see you in the next video. Uh, stay safe and uh, keep smelling great.